Hello everyone, welcome back to Reddit.ly. Today's story is actually a two-parter, so the next one will be uploaded tomorrow, so make sure you tune in for the second part as well. The first part is titled, Absolute Devastation to Liberation, 20-Year Relationship Destroyed by Cheating Wife. Please make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss our future uploads. Let's get right into it. It's about two years for me, 40 male, from DD with my cheating ex, 39 female. We were high school sweethearts at the end of our senior year. I just graduated and met her working in a video store in a small suburb. We were close friends for about six months and eventually it led me getting up to courage to plant a kiss and the rest as they say is history. Unfortunately, as this tale has found its way to the sub we all know, and it didn't end well. I had never really had friends who cheated, never heard anyone talk about it, and I had no idea the amount of trauma that was on the way. It was a random occurrence that I had even found out. My folks were visiting and my ex took off to go to a co-worker's wedding in another state. She had told me about the event about two weeks prior. My ex had a few friends that weren't mutual, nothing out of the ordinary, but there I was watching a movie with the folks and realized I misplaced my phone during the day. I was holding my iPad and browsing during the flick and tepidly shifted to find my iPhone feature. Married for 10 years, we had a lot of accounts tied together, and iTunes was one of them. Instead of my phone being first on the list, it was hers. Instead of being out of state, she was at a local hotel about an hour away that doubles as a popular brewery. They hold weddings there all the time, and I was sure that was it. I'd find her there with her co-workers. Around 8 p.m., I made it out to the hotel and couldn't find her anywhere. Looking for two hours, I narrowed the GPS to a certain wing. She wasn't in the restaurant, so I did my best Eddie Murphy impression. That's what I call it when you con your way into somewhere you shouldn't be or get free stuff because Eddie was a master of that in his early movies. I head to the front desk and say, gee, my sister was at a wedding earlier and I'm afraid some guy took advantage of her because she's drunk. Can you give me the room number? After slight hesitation and asking me to provide a phone number, they pointed me to the room. My heart raced as I turned a couple corners, now knowing what I was going to find. I knocked on the door and tried to channel Eddie again. Room service? I mentioned in the most pleasant tone I could master while holding my anger and rage. A male answered and I must have had the wrong room. Immediately my cover was blown. I think I have the right effing room. How about you open so we can have a conversation? My cheating spouse starts texting me, finally found out the jig is up. She says she wants to talk in the morning and that she refuses to come out of the room. Oh, okay, stay there the rest of the night with your lover, got it. I linger for about an hour just to see if they'll come out. At this place, the restrooms are in the hallways, European style, but neither person emerged and I gave up. I went and took photos of her car for some kind of proof and went home heartbroken to a sleepless night. She asked me to meet her in public park where she knew there'd be people. She actually said that. Oh, okay, never ever laid a finger on you or raised my voice at you in 20 years, but now domestic violence is a concern. Making her wait, I got to the park a few minutes late and realized that my expectations are still off. Even though I got the coldest shoulder the night before, I was ready to make this work, to fix it. I came with a forgiving heart expecting remorse. Surely my wife of 10 to 11 years wouldn't gaslight our whole existence. She's in tears, says she's sorry, looks like the whole time she's just sorry she was caught. Told her how I found out and she smirked at it. We discussed her coming home and I was both appalled and mesmerized to hear, I just can't go back to the way things were. I'm so trapped there. Three. Oh, okay, so she's the victim, right? She spent three days in a hotel downtown, presumably just spending time with her lover, trying to decide if she should come back home. The AP was in a relationship too, has a 12-year-old son, and maybe that baggage was too much for her. She came home completely listless for a week, would hardly speak to me, demanded we sleep in separate rooms, claims she'll work on this but just needs space after all she's been through. She's done seeing the AP, we do the quote unquote right thing and start marital counseling. Session 1. No further details come up. I ask for transparency and I've been going nuts researching affairs on the internet. She just maintains she can't go back to the way things were, but in no way can verbalize why her life wasn't happy or fulfilling enough and what is meant by her statement. Luckily for me, the therapist spots something and poignantly asks, you've ended the affair, right? 
Shock and awe, she hadn't. Well, uh, I was going to call him and let him know, but I haven't yet. As I began the slow troll into the trickle truth, she confessed somewhat that she'd been with or at least one year prior. It was an unbeknownst to me utterly and completely, still happy in the bedroom as she manipulated me with gifts. At one point, she gave me a watch that was engraved on the underside, loving you more every second. She'd remember to send me texts and call when out of town on business slash affair frolicking. Eventually, I'm just a ball of tears and weighing my options of going to jail. Just getting out of this crap right now or sticking in the marriage I am so committed to. I love this woman with every ounce of my being. We pass each other around the house like ghosts of our former selves. I yell and scream at the world randomly from time to time. It's the darkest period I can recall in my life. We have S, I think it's makeup S, but when we're done, she says she just needed to get it off and that we never really loved each other. Ouch. Here I thought we had a great relationship that never lost its spark. We were intimate in the bedroom two to four times a week, always. Session two, transparency is abysmal. In fact, my wife has turned off location sharing on all devices and changed all her passwords to everything. How dare I ask for such a thing when she's so damaged and in mourning? Cheating ex asks for an open relationship that'll fix everything. I'm appalled and desperate. I'm just in a terrible mental state and shamefully I agree. I think I secretly know that it's over, but I don't know how to get my physical self to agree. The therapist corners her saying she needs to break it off with the AP. Still no word on that. And that polyamory might not be healthy for the, at this point in our relationship. My ex vows never to go back to therapy because that lady was mean to her. Oh, okay. Starting to see a pattern here. I make a move. Maybe it's a mistake. I download Tinder and go on a couple dates. I actually tell the people I'm married and I'm probably getting a divorce. I was super transparent before meeting up with these people. One told me if I finalize the divorce to give her a call because I'm a great guy. The other took me home to her bed. I wish I would have had waited be simply because this gave my ex firepower and mild justification for the affair. We'll get to that in a brief moment. I'm almost done with the crazy train. That same weekend, she goes on an over camping trip with her AP, tells me about it in the same name of transparency. Meanwhile, doesn't validate anything else I'm asking about. It was a setup that made me continue to feel worthless and why I slept with a Tinder fling. About a week later, I tried meeting up with her. She said she wanted to discuss the divorce. It really just ended up being her wanting to flirt with me and then control my advances. She'd say how much she cared about me, but if I tried to touch her leg, she'd say she wasn't ready for that yet. Since I had moved out, she insanely also moved out and was paying double rent by getting a nice city apartment just a couple blocks from the bar we happened to be at. When I offered to walk her home, she scoffed and said she'd be fine and also wasn't ready for me to see her new place. So been at your husband nearly 11 years, together for 20, and now I can't touch your leg or walk you home. By Monday, I've had enough. Astonishingly, I'm still waiting to work through it and repair the marriage, but it isn't there. WS goes on a business trip, and at this point, I really have no idea what's going on. There's absolutely zero trust. I call her and demand, you leave this man, you commit to loving me, you rebuild this trust immediately, or I'm leaving you before you get home. She responded that she just wasn't sure she could do all those things. It is no longer a marriage, but a disaster that needs to clean up crew. While she's away, I pack all my necessary belongings, grab the dog, and move in with some friends. She really didn't think I'd do it. She called me sobbing that night. Why had I moved my stuff out? Total trip to crazy town. I told her she'd better act soon, that after nearly two months of dealing with this, she needed to make a decision. I could no longer live with her as part of the situation and the time is expiring shortly. I told her more than likely in two months or less, I'd probably be firmly planted in a divorce camp, that she'd be done nothing to work towards my side and done nothing to make abusive comments with her selfishness and endless need to be validated by men. She responded to this by telling me it was my fault for finding out about the affair. In her words, she wasn't looking for a way out but would have played the good housewife role for the rest of our lives if I just wouldn't have found out. I was sickened and driven mad by what I heard on the phone. Who was this person I thought I knew? Who I shared my life with? Who valued me so little that I was a throwaway object or at most 
only there to placate her wants and desires. She backpedaled and explained, This could be a good thing. We'll grow into something new and we'll go on dates together and be excited to see each other again. If it's meant to be, then we'll get back together. Seriously, WTF. Even in this state, I knew relationship or something you work at and that love is a practice and I was getting none of that from this horrific shell of a human being. Alone with the dog in my new rented room at my friends, I bit the pillow hard and sobbed harder than night that ever in my life. It wasn't wants or desires this time, but I knew it was over, truly over. I knew the woman I loved was gone, maybe the rose-tainted glasses were lifted, but I knew it would be in my best interest to never interact with this person again and cut them out of my life. I was devastated because I truly and deeply gave my love to this person and thought all these years it had been reciprocated. As my therapist and many on here have told me, I was the lobster in a pot. I didn't see the red flags when she hated all my friends or told me her friends hated me. I didn't see the red flags when she'd buy me clothes and parade me like a trophy. Well, I'm kind of fit and handsome. I didn't see the red flags when she started traveling endlessly for work. Nor did I see them when I asked her how she really felt and if there was anything that could make our relationship better. Part of it is the eyes of love, and part of it was her nasty manipulation that I couldn't see until now. Nothing was ever enough for her. Not my job, not our house we owned, not the work I did on the house. It was all a ruse that fit perfectly with my codependency. I wanted to fix things and to be good enough, and she was very capable at causing enough disaster and dangling enough carrots to keep me engaged. I wasn't looking to have love reciprocated, but to love her so much that it was enough for both of us. With my head clear, I resolved that the divorce was going to happen and with her crazy attitude, it meant I was filing all the paperwork. I wish I could end this mega rant here, but you've only seen the awakening this far. The claws are about to come out. Stay tuned for part two being uploaded tomorrow and we'll continue the story then.